I'm Jean Nolte, editor at Fonz and Porter. And I'm Colleen Tauke. I'm the sewing specialist at Fonz and Porter. In this tutorial, we will learn how to put together variations for the blocks that go into the quilt alphabet. Well, this is a quilt that I actually made, and I used a pack of bright colors of mm -hmm. two and a half inch strips and then a background fabric, which I chose a polka dot. And then you'll need a um, border fabric at the end. So we're going to just talk about um, the letter A to begin with. And you can see that it's divided into five sections here. And the technique that we use is the diagonal seams method. And this is the same for most of the letters. So what we're going to do is make this section right here. So as you've cut your pieces, the instructions tell you to label them, and that's because some of them are very close in size and it makes mm -hmm. a big difference which ones you use. So we're going to choose the pieces for this section. It's a long rectangle and a square. And the first thing we're gonna do is draw a diagonal line across that square from corner to corner. And as you'll see, notice the, the um, bar for the A and the little um, corner is the same, but in reverse um, color placements. So the techniques you're learning are going to repeat over and over right. throughout the different blocks. All right, now you can see my line here, and I'm looking at it here. I want to make sure that I put them right sides together with that drawn line at the same angle as it is mm -hmm. in the same diagram, tilt. or you will get a different piece. So we're <laughs> going to go ahead and sew that. The nice part about this is that you're actually sewing right on the drawn line. And so you don't have to worry about quarter inch it, seams. No, it should be pretty accurate. Yep, right down the line. And cut thread. Right. You're gonna get really good at this technique. It goes really quickly though. So what I always do is fold this back to make sure that it indeed looks like it's supposed to, and it does. So then you're gonna trim off your seam allowance and I usually use a ruler and rotary cutter just because that's how I like to do it, but you could just use the scissors here because mm -hmm. you don't have to really worry about an accurate seam allowance because you've already marked it. And already stitched it. And <laughs> sewn on the line. So then what you're going to do is press that. Give it a quick little Always press. heat press the seam, warm up the fibers, then bring the triangle out to finish the So I'm going to press that toward the uh, outer edge. Colored piece there. So you see, that's this piece. Now, these pieces are all made the exact same way. The only thing is when you make this one, you gotta make sure you angle that's that true. square the other direction, or you won't have, you know, It'll this happen. isn't gonna work over there. No, <laughs> it'd be kind of a flip instead. So right. what we're suggesting is as you make each of the alphabet pieces, take out the required cuts lay them out on the board like we have here. Mm -hmm. Even before you start to assemble, double check everything and then make that letter. Right. Just so then concentrate on one All you're going to do to finish this letter is join, join rows. these five rows and that block will be done. Now we have um, the letter G pieces here because there's a couple things that are a little bit different about this letter. It's basically the same with the diagonal seams units. Now we're going to see if I can uh, Turn this into Create a letter, G, letter huh? G, and that's the, the piece that. Oh no, that direction doesn't work. <laughs> it's this way as it curls <laughs> in to make the bottom of the letter okay. G. See why we're telling you to lay them all out? <laughs> all right. So let's look at the components here, and you can see this is one long colored yeah. rectangle with mm -hmm. two little squares, and you can see we haven't actually cut them off yet, so you can see them. Just that flip corner. And again, be careful of the angles. Mm -hmm. This is also the same thing, and this one. So this is just a, a bigger rectangle, but it just has a square on it, same method. Now, these would all be cut off. We just haven't done that so we can show what they were. But we wanted you to think about, it's a large piece, we're sliding it up into the corner of the block, and we're right. going to just angle it in one corner right. like that. And again, you need to watch in your assembly diagram to see which direction the diagonal that diagonal line needs to go. Now, the only thing that's a little bit different with this block is this section right here where we started with two rectangles instead of a rectangle and a mm -hmm. square. And Shaped in order to make that, 
We're going to put them perpendicular to one another. It almost makes you think we're making binding because right. we, ma we angle like that when we make binding. And again, you're going to just sew diagonally from corner to corner, but it's important that it's the right direction. direction. Right. So you'll want to test it. Sometimes I lay them out like this and put a pin where mm -hmm. the seam line is going to be and then mm -hmm. flip it to make sure when I uh, turn it out it's the right way so you don't have to unsew and sew it the <laughs> other direction. Exactly. So then what you'll do is just join this center group. Make mm -hmm. like a, a column. And then this. Now this one you'll notice has skinny Something pieces different. that are going to go on each side because it's not a full 10 inches wide, so it needs the spacers on the sides to make it a 10 inch square. And when you look at those small bars, you think, what, what's that gonna look like in the quilt? You look at the quilt, you can't even see it they because the polka dot is a great camouflage. They pretty much just disappear. Mm -hmm. So that is the letter G and the basics for that one. A Couple of things. Then there's one more technique used mm -hmm. and that is some foundation piecing in the alphabet, there are letters that have harder angles than just those little flip corners. And so we need to show you some uh, technique that you can make um, those letters like letter K, things that have a large angle. Right. So in the pattern, the um, foundations are printed, but they're at 50%. So you'll need to either copy them at 200% or go online and the instructions will give you the... Uh, the website and you can download the full size pieces mm, okay. and print them there. So this is the foundation for uh, part of the letter K. And so the first thing we're going to do is is rough cut some pieces to use and it the instructions tell you to cut uh, square in half for the corners which are piece one, pieces one and five. And so you can see this is piece one right here and the, that piece is plenty, well it would actually go this way, is plenty big enough to cover, to cover that, that whole foundation. So the first thing that we're going to do, well, the other thing I would do is cut all the pieces. Yeah, and so the pieces. number two is right here. And so that's cut off of the strip. So what I would do is fold this part down and you can see number two is gonna need to cover out to here. And so cut it just a little bit big so you got plenty of room when you sew and flip. The most common mistake for beginning um, foundation paper piecing people is that they cut the pieces too small and then they get frustrated because they have to take things out. It's always easier to trim off you can't put it back oh, on. Right. <laughs> so just trust right. us, make them a little bit bigger. And then piece number three is this big large. triangle here. Mm -hmm. And you can see that we've overcut it large enough. That there's plenty of room there and plenty of room there. And you would just continue then with piece four and piece five is the other triangle. So to get started, we're going to use pieces number one and number two. And the first thing we're going to do is position piece number one. It's wrong side up and the paper on top of it so you can read the letters mm -hmm. on the foundation. I'm going to just flip this back on the line and we pre-crease all the lines before we start sewing because it's a lot easier. It also kind of weakens those seam lines so that later when you're going to remove the paper, it makes it a lot, a lot easier. easier. So I'm going to put about a quarter inch seam allowance there, flip it back and hand me a pin. Here we're going to just put a pin in there to hold it in place and you can see now the right side of the fabric. I'm going to take that off of there now. I'm kind of one of those people who loves to <laughs> keep everything in, in order so yep. I put sticky dots so that might be a tip for you right. too. So the right side of the fabric is facing away from the paper and there's a good quarter inch seam allowance there. Okay, so now piece number two is going to go here. So we're gonna flip that and center it because we know this white uh, background piece was centered. And then I'm gonna just take that pin out. 
it's a little tricky at first when you first start and you think, oh, am I even doing this right? And then after a couple pieces go on, you're thinking, wow, this is easy. It really I'm is. I'm sewing on the dotted line. There's really not a lot of thinking going on oh. after that. It just becomes like clockwork of placing and flipping and placing okay. and flipping. So this is just like any other piecing. You've got right sides together. Mm -hmm. And we know that that seam allowance is there. We're gonna now flip that over and just sew on that line. Sew on the dotted line. So now you start a little bit outside yep. the... I'm starting off the edge here. Now when we cut out our pieces um, for the actual paper, I did oversize them just to give myself enough room there. Like I've said, you, you can't put it back on, but you can oversize it. That's so there's thing. about a quarter of an inch of paper around the foundation. Um, because the, the solid line is going to be the outside of the foundation. Okay, we take the pin out. The fun part is then we, when we flip it out, we can see we can. that number, letter K, our piece so, is right there, the way we want it to be. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I hold it up to the light and I can see that that covers that piece. So I'm going to quickly give it a little press to flatten that out. Now, that is one important tip is to make sure you open all the way to your stitching line. That way you know for sure that it's going to cover. Um, when we designed the alphabet letters, it made sure that the two and a half inch strips were perfect for the letters. Right. So Now I'm going to fold back on the bottom of that line just to now make see, sure. Look, there's enough and there's a plenty of <laughs> seam allowance there. That's great. If it's way too big, I would, I would take my ruler and trim it down, but that's about exactly right. So now I know that piece number three is going to go next. It's going to go this way. So it's gonna, it's gonna fit on here like this. Yep. Think it through so it looks pretty. <laughs> and I can see that it's covering all of that. And so now mm -hmm. I know that this needs to go right sides together. Mm -hmm. I can see that crease right there. So I make sure that this side of the triangle is Makes past sense. that crease. Now I think if you just put a couple of pins, maybe you wanna do it from the front and put it on okay. the seam line. We're, we're just gonna, gonna we're just gonna put the pins in the seam line, and I do this sometimes when I'm paper piecing Especially to if you're test a, a large space. And you put a couple sure. of pins right along the seam line. We're gonna pretend we're sewing, right? Just to let you see, and then you can flip that flip. back and, and check to make sure that everything covers. It's gonna cover, and it does. So I'd go ahead and sew that, and you just and continue press in that manner until you get. You do piece four and piece five, mm -hmm. and we have one here. So this is what it's going will look like once you've put all of those pieces on. And it's kind of messy; pieces hang off the edge. But here's where we get to make it look really. So perfect. now, now that I know that my foundation is totally covered, I I use a ruler and a rotary cutter and just put that right along the line. Now, do as I say, not as I've done to myself. Make sure you cut on the solid line, not the dotted line. I've done them before. I made a piece, cut on the dotted line, took all my seam allowances off. Once you do that, you've got to start, <laughs> start over again. from the beginning. Then you're really going to be good. So cut on the solid line. Right. That dashed line that's in there is going to be your stitching line when we put the rest of the block together. So I'm going to cut off that side. And then all the way around, and it's going to look like you are the precision piecer. <laughs> That's the great thing about paper piecing, mm -hmm. like this with the foundation. It comes out the perfect size, oh, and there is the beginning of our letter K. So now Doesn't all we need... doesn't look like it's finished yet, does it? No, we need the, the oh. other straight colored piece, and this one also needs the spacers to things. make it a 10-inch block. So now you would join these sections and then remove the paper after you join the sections. Right. Because you want the outer edge to be stabilized and have something connecting to it because there are bias edges. All the folding that we did before we started weakened those seams so the paper will come out really easily. That'll tear off quite easily now. Mm -hmm. So those are all the techniques you need to make the blocks. You have a couple more. Uh, the M and the W are also paper pieced. Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing we need to do is make the four corner blocks. And these are really very simple. They're the five time, sections. By the time you've made all the alphabet, you're going to think this is the easiest thing. That's, <laughs> so that's it's a good thing. There. So again, it, your assembly diagram will tell you 
what size pieces exactly. to use. These are just squares and rectangles put together so that the squares <laughs> go diagonally through the block. So you'll just join those five sections to make a corner block. Make four corner blocks. They're all exactly alike. They just turn different directions. Then use the remaining um, two and a half inch strips. You join them together to make the inner border. You can have fun putting the color combinations that you like. Mm -hmm. An outer border. And then um, the remaining two and a half inch strips were used for binding. So there is there is no waste. no waste. There's very little left out of a, the packs of strips when you're done. Thanks for joining us today.